My name is Crystal Williams and I am a Pioneer Field Agronomist. I live actually at West Brooklyn, just outside of Mendota, Illinois. Since I began in the agronomy industry, I've worked in Kansas and Nebraska and Ohio and Illinois now, um, and really just love helping farmers um, grow their operation or improve their operation to the next new heights. Coming to Illinois here within the last four years, really I've learned that white mold is a significant issue that we have to deal with. And um, just in 2022, we had quite a bit of white mold pop up in some areas. So white mold is a soybean disease that we find in high productivity acres in Northern Illinois specifically. So it's an issue in Northern Illinois because of the high humidity and cool temperatures that we can sometimes face. Specifically, it's an in-season issue that really robs yield. It's found in our soils, so we have to manage it every year or try to be proactive to manage it. One way to identify white mold is by noticing, they kind of call it like a flag leaf that's a dead plant randomly out in the middle of the field. Um, that's a good, really quick indicator if you're driving by and doing some scouting. Once you go out into the field, it's got to be beyond flowering basically is when you're gonna to start to see it or at flowering. When you open up the canopy and look at the stems, there will be a white um, lesion that is on the side of the stem. Um, and as well as you can find when you split open that stem, little black sclerotia, which is ultimately what that fungal pathogen uses to carry over into the future years. White mold's kind of a little of a unique disease because if you find it, it's already kind of too late. So what you would do is plan a fungicide pass. If you want to be really intensive with managing white mold, that would actually be a two fungicide pass system. If you're just wanting the basic protection, that would just be a single pass at R2 or at the end of flowering. If you want to have a more intensive one, it would be at R1, which is the very first flower, and then R3, which is when um, pods start to develop. So other things that you can do to manage white mold is look at different elements within your soybean system. Depending on what your planting width is, um, basically you want to increase the airflow. So if you're on a um, seven and a half to a 15 inch row um, spacing, you want to increase to a 30 inch row system to increase the amount of airflow that goes through. Another thing farmers can use to um, manage white mold is ultimately variety selection. So soybeans in the industry are scored on white mold. And one important note is that even if, according to a company, a soybean is um, at the highest level or best protection for white mold, the environment still can be conducive and have um, white mold symptoms, it's just going to be at a lower level than what a really poor white mold score um, soybean is at. So, and then other novel ideas are actually utilizing a cover crop like rye. So there are, within the rye roots, there is a antimicrobial activity that actually happens and reduces some of the amount of those fungal spores that are out in the field actually. Ultimately, white mold negatively impacts yield because it robs it um, significantly. But ultimately, um, those flowers are going to create the pods or ultimately grain that comes later on in the season. When white mold comes in, it can abort some of those pods and cause ultimately no yield to be happening. Utilizing resources like Illinois Soybean Association and the Illisoy Advisor and Soy Envoy team to help find resources that will help you select a solid fungicide option for your fields with white mold, as well as managing and scouting for white mold.